Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Sharing Stuff on Servers. And since I thought that particular title was just a little too formal, I came up with a little more technical subtitle here for you, setting up shared folders with, and printers, mapping drives, and wrestling with permissions. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So in this video, let's kind of give a quick rundown here. We're going to first start up by setting up a member server. Uh, we've set up our domain controllers, we set up the groups, we set up the user accounts and all that good stuff, but we really need to add in an additional file server so that we're not sharing files and folders on the domain controllers because they have enough to do already. Then once we have that member server available, we're going to start building some shared folders for our Global Mantics users to use throughout their process of working. And then we're going to talk about the different kinds of share level permissions. And you know what? This is really important. If you, if you don't get this section, uh, you're going to have some troubles when you start sharing folders. So we're going to kind of dig into that quite a bit. Then we'll talk with you about how to make your folders really easier to find by doing what we call mapping a shared drive. We'll talk about what that means. And then, of course, I want to talk to you about creating and sharing printers real quick. It's a short little section, but it is going to be one of those important resources that you're going to have in your network that people are going to fight over all the time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up a printer and then share it and control who gets access to what printer. And trust me, it will <laughs> end a lot of fighting over who gets to print what and when. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start off by talking about uh, adding in another server. And again, you know, like I told you, we've set up our user accounts. We've added them to groups so we can control who had access to what shared folders and printers. You know, no big deal there. But now we need to create the shared folders and printers for each of our different departments. And in order to do that, again, we need to have that new resource. We need to have that new server to handle that kind of workload. We don't want to be overloading our domain controllers because, you know, they have plenty to do. And there's a security issue there, too. Uh, so we're going to be building this new server. And just here's just a quick rundown. We're going to talk about this again. But uh, we're going to be building NYMEMWOM2K8. And it's a, it's a pretty simple box. It only has a half a gig of RAM. And we're going to be installing uh, the 32-bit version of server. And we're only going to do the standard edition for this one. For file and print servers, you don't need enterprise. So we can kind of save a few bucks there. And, of course, we'll be joining this guy to the Globomantics domain. Now, we're also going to be building some shared folders, and we're going to be mapping them. We're going to be creating these shared folders for specific groups of folks. You know, And there's pretty... Uh, Pretty self-explanatory here. We're going to have one for the sales documents, sales managers, so we can kind of hide off some super secret documents that everybody doesn't need to see. Uh, same thing with ops. You know, We're going to have a general ops folder. We're going to map it as the O drive so it's easier to find. And, of course, we're going to create a separate folder for ops managers too. And then, of course, we're going to be actually creating three printers. We're going to do two laser printers and one inkjet. We're going to be setting those up. All right, so uh, first, though, we need to have really some resource that will handle all of this kind of stuff. So, again, we're going to be building a server, and here's what we're going to be building. Uh, we're going to name our new Server 2008 machine NYMEMWOM2K8. We're going to be providing this IP address for it, 192.168.5.4. It's going to have a half a gig of RAM, no big surprise there. It's got a 2 gigahertz processor. It is a 32-bit processor, so we can only use a 32-bit version of server, right? Uh, we got a pretty good amount of hard drive space here for it, where we have two 120 gigabit hard drives. Of course, it has a gigabit NIC, just like our other two machines. And once again, we're going to be installing the 32-bit server standard edition of Server 2008. All right, now, again, it's, it's just not best practice to share folders for everyday work on a domain controller. But also on our new server that we're going to be building, we're going to be preparing the second hard drive file for file and folder sharing. We're going to be formatting and partitioning the second hard drive on this particular machine into two 60 gigabyte partitions, one for the operation side and one for the sales side. And we're doing this really to provide an easy way to organize these two departments. It's going to make some backup issues easier. There's going to be all kinds of advantages to having them on separate partitions. First and foremost, it's really an organization technique. In order to make sure that we can actually put our shared file folders on the server <laughs> and have it work, we need to make sure that file sharing is also enabled on MEM1. And so I'm going to take you into the Network and Sharing Center. We'll 
get that all set up too. All right, so we know what we're going to be building, so let's go ahead and let's move on over to the server and let's get this started. All right, so here we are over on what will become NYMEM1 2K8. You'll see here that I've already installed it because, well, you've already seen two installations and the 32-bit standard edition isn't any different than the 64-bit edition. <laughs> right? So we're going to go ahead and just start off with a, a fresh, clean machine here. We haven't even logged into this machine for the first time. So let's go ahead and let's tell this OK and let's change our password here real quick. We're going to, again, be creating that first initial password for the local administrator account. We're going to start with that kind of account. And it should take us here just a second for this guy to load up and go ahead and give us the AOK -okay for the password being changed. All right, we'll tell it OK. And it shouldn't take us very long, but again, we're going to be presented with that initial configuration task list. You know, we've seen it twice already. We're going to see it a third time again uh, because, you know, again, we, I want to take you through this step by step. You will know how to set up this entire network by the time you're done watching this video. All right, there we go. We've got the desktop up and our ICT should be showing up here momentarily. And there we have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just go down the punch list here real quick, just like we did for our first two machines. We're going to go ahead and set the time zone. And we will set that to Eastern. There we go. Just a, just a real quick switch here. Till that OK. And let's configure our networking item next. You know, and again, this is uh, you know no big deal here. Just stuff that we do all the time. We'll double click on our local area connection. We'll click on properties, and then we will turn off our IP version six because remember we're still living in an IP version four world. And double clicking now on the IP version four stuff, we're going to specify a static address here of. Yep, let's see, let's go back here to the home and let's do 192.168.5.4. Our subnet mask is figured out for us when we hit the tab key. And our default gateway is going to be our router, which is 192.168.5.1. Then our DNS servers, I'm just hitting the tab key, by the way, to move down through the fields. Uh, our preferred DNS server is going to be 192.168.5.2. That, remember, is our first domain controller. And then we'll also add in 192.168.5.3, which is DC2, our second domain controller. And I'm going to tell it OK. OK again. And then close. Should do a little network discovery here for us. And we are A-OK -okay for this section. So let's go ahead and close it. And by the way, the keyboard shortcut to close a window that I just used was Control w Control w is a window shortcut that all it does is closes the active window. All right, next, let's go ahead and let's do the whole computer name and domain thing. Now, in previous machines, we had to actually rename the machine before joining the domain. Well, we don't have to do that with this one. Let's go ahead and click on Change. And let's go ahead and let's change the computer name here real quick. It should be NYMEM12K8. Make sure that my naming system remains consistent here and I'm going to go ahead and join it to the domain right now because this is not going to be a domain controller so we don't have to do the whole AD role installation we don't have to do DC promo this is just going to be a member server all right so we're going to do globalmatics.com and we'll rename the machine and join the domain in one fell swoop when we're doing member servers all right now it's going to ask me for my credentials so of course I'm going to put in supercoach right because that is the only account that uh, we have in order to actually do any kind of domain joining. And so it should sit here and spin for just a little bit while it goes and talks to the domain controller. And we should be presented with a, hey, there we go, welcome to Globomatics.com domain message. That's fantastic. So we'll tell that OK. And of course, we do have to restart the machine to apply the changes. So let's go ahead and I'm going to restart the machine right now. And then as soon as it's done rebooting, I'll start recording again.
All right, so you see that Mem1 has rebooted. We're going to go ahead and do a control alt delete to log in here real quick. Remember that it always wants us to log in as a local administrator first. That's not what we want to do. We want to log in as our administrator account for Globomantics. So I'm going to click on other user. And again, we're logging in here as Globomantics. And so we're going to log in as Supercoach. And we'll put in the password and away we go. Again, it shouldn't take very long for it to boot up here real quick. And we're going to go back to the ICT and finish out our punch list for the initial configuration. All right, here we go. Here's our ICT as it loads everything up. Our networking item is, is set up correctly. Our machine is joined to Globomantics.com. And you notice that the name change also took effect. So for member servers, remember, you don't have to do the whole AD installation, the DC promo thing. We can just go ahead and join it to the domain and change the machine's name at the same time. All right, let's go ahead and let's uh, do our quick automatic updating configuration. Remember, we want to uh, have it actually do just the check for the updates, and then we'll get to decide whether or not to download and install them. And we'll go ahead and we'll include recommended updates too. We'll tell it OK. All right, everything else is good. Our errors reporting will ask, ask us every time that an error occurs whether or not we want to send stuff back and forth to Microsoft. And then, of course, we're not participating in the Customer Experience Improvement Program. We'll close that guy. And then, of course, we should probably go ahead and do our download and install updates since we're initially setting up this server. Looks like since the last time we did this, it uh, looks like we have some more updates. So let's go ahead and we'll view the available updates just to make sure that we want all of them. And it looks like pretty much all of them are all about the whole security thing. So those are good. These Recommended and optional ones we may or may not want. We may need to look these up. We don't have any third-party software running, though. So chances are these updates aren't going to squirrel anything up because, well, all we have is the basic core server set running. So we'll go ahead and we'll install all of this stuff here. And it'll take a little bit. So once again, I'm going to pause the recording while this downloads. And as soon as it is ready to install, I'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is. Our updates were successfully downloaded and installed as you see here. And it did take about 10 minutes just to kind of give you an idea of how long that might take, depending upon the speed of your internet connection. So guess what? It's time to restart again. And you're probably thinking to yourself right now, man, is, can we do anything without restarting? And the answer is uh, yes. There, there are a few things <laughs> that you can do. A lot of stuff does take a lot of restarts. So again, I'm going to pause the recording, and then as soon as this guy is done rebooting and doing its thing, uh, I'll be right back. All right, so here we are once again, and we're logging back in as Supercoach. All right, so we have gotten a lot of our steps done already. We have downloaded and updates say hey, there we go it's telling us that we have that's fantastic we've configured our networking we've renamed the machine we've joined it to the domain we've got all that fun stuff done and so uh any other quick items you know since this is just going to be a member server and all we're going to use it for initially is file sharing uh, we don't even need to add in any roles or features although i do want to enable remote desktop though so let's go ahead and enable the remote desktop here real quick will allow connections only from computers running remote desktop with network level authentication remember that means that the machine is joined to the domain and that we have logged in with our domain credentials and it's also telling us that remote desktop firewall uh, will be exceptioned it will be <laughs> you know can you can you use that as a verb uh, it, the exception will be enabled and so that's a okay so we can actually get through the firewall to administrate this machine using remote desktop all right so do we have to restart to do the remote desktop no <laughs> thank heavens right all right windows firewall is on that's not a bad thing uh, so we'll go ahead and we will put a check mark here and do not show this window at logon so we don't have to see this again remember if you leave that unchecked, then it shows up every time you reboot your machine. And after we've done that, those steps, well, you're probably not going to have to use the ICT again. 
So here we are over on the server manager. And so what we need to do next is we need to get into the hard drives and we need to start partitioning that second hard drive. So we have one section for the ops people, one section for the sales people. So we'll go here into the storage section of our server manager. We'll go ahead and we'll expand this guy here real quick. And we'll go into disk management. Now disk management, uh, if you've used server before, this is probably going to be relatively familiar. There's not a lot new in it uh, except for this here thing. The GUID partition table is the newer style of uh, partitioning disks. Uh, if you have older versions of Windows running around on your network, you may not want to use that. Now, uh, this initialized disk window just popped up for us here. So you see that disk 0, our primary hard disk, is A-OK, -okay, but disk 1 has not been initialized. It's just hanging out, and it's blank. <laughs> so it's not doing us a lot of good just being blank. So we're going to go ahead and initialize this guy. We're going to use the master boot record partition style so that it's compatible with older versions of Windows. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll tell it OK. And it should take just a little bit. There we go. Now the sky is now initialized. It's online. And we now have this 120 gigabytes worth of unallocated space on this hard disk. So let's go ahead and right click on it. And we're going to create a new simple volume on this disk. Now a volume uh, you know, is just exactly that. It is a section of the disk. A volume can be considered a partition or an entire disk. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll tell it next here. And we're going to make a 60 gigabyte partition because we have 120 gigabytes worth. So real quickly here, let's do a quick calculation. I'm going to open up calculator here real quick because I you know, can't do math in my head to tell you the truth. <laughs> So we know that a gigabyte is 1,024 megabytes. And if I want 60 gigabytes, we'll multiply it by 60 here. All right, so we need to have 61,440 uh, megabytes. So I'll tell you what, let's just do a quick copy here from the edit menu. I'm going to come over here into the simple size in megabytes item. I'm going to do a control V on the keyboard. Remember, control V is your keyboard shortcut to paste. So paste that value in there, tell it next. I'm going to go ahead and assign uh, the drive letter E to this one. That's always a good item. We also have the ability to mount it into an empty folder. Now, we don't have any folders set up really for this, so we're going to skip that for right now. And we also have the option to not assign a drive letter drive path. This is not a good option if you actually want to use the disk. <laughs> right? So we're going to go ahead and leave uh, the drive letter E assigned to it. We'll tell it next. And now we have the option of not formatting this volume. Of course, again, why would we want to do that? Because we, well, we do want to use this disk. We're going to format this guy with NTFS. Uh, that's all we have optioned for here. Um, in terms of allocation unit, we can leave that set to default. Uh, if you don't have any good reason to change this, then just leave it alone. All right? Uh, volume label. Uh, we're going to make this first partition. Uh, let's make this one for the sales stuff. All right. We'll make this this the sales volume. So all of our sales stuff will be on this particular partition. Now we are going to perform a quick format, and we're also going to enable file and folder compression to conserve space. Now, one quick note about this enabling file and folder compression. You can take a slight performance hit if you enable this. So if you want a, the if you want a super duper fast performance on a particular disk, leave this unchecked, okay? You know, you, you really kind of have an option of, you know, do I really want a fast performing disk or do I want an efficiently managed disk in terms of storage? You would check this if you want efficient management of your storage space. You would uncheck it if performance is a bigger issue. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and tell this next. It's going to tell me what I'm about to do. It all looks good. And I'm going to tell it to finish. Now it's going to sit here and spin for a little while while it actually formats this disk. And as soon as it's done formatting this disk, I'm going to come back because right now we're going to pause because it's going to take a little bit, probably five or 10 minutes to finish formatting 60 gigs. And then we will go ahead and we'll format that second section this other 60 gigabyte partition for the op side. All right, so our sales volume has completely finished formatting here. You see that the partition is healthy 
and it has been renamed AOK. -OK. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's format the rest of it here for the op side. We're going to go and right click on it and select new simple volume. We'll select that. We'll tell it next. And we'll go ahead and we'll just take everything else <laughs> that was left. We'll tell it next. We'll assign the drive letter F right now. We'll tell it next. And now we're going to format this volume once again. With NTFS, we'll leave the allocation unit size to default. And then this volume label, uh, we're going to call this guy the ops volume here. We'll perform a quick format and we will enable file and folder compression. We'll tell that next and finish. And then once again, we have to kind of hang out here and wait for this guy to format. That will pretty much wrap up the preparation that we need to do for our global matics project here. So now we need to start talking about creating the folders. And so let's go ahead and move back on over to the slide. Let's talk about the kinds of folders we're going to be creating. All right, so our disks are set up. Let's talk about these folders now. Now, just so you know, you can create folders using Windows Explorer. A lot of you are familiar with creating folders. It's no big deal, right? But there's a new shared storage management MMC. It's going to give us a lot more tools and a lot more comprehensive tools, I should say, that are going to allow us to provision our shared folders. Now, uh, so we're going to be using this guy here for a lot of our stuff. But I will show you, by the way, how to create them in Windows Explorer 2. So let's talk about the folders we're going to make. We're going to be creating, uh, first of all, a sales documents on the E drive here. Uh, we're going to be creating a sales manager folder as well. Then we're going to be creating the general ops folder on the F drive and then the ops managers folder on the F drive as well. Now, what we'll do is we'll take these two and I'll tell you what, we'll use this uh, new share and storage management control panel for these two. And then I'll take and we'll create these using Windows Explorer. So that way you see both sets of tools. Now, the end result is the same, just so you know. I mean, you can use the share and storage management tool for all of them if you want to. There's no damage going to be done or anything you're really going to be missing out. Uh, it's just that everything that you would normally do is all kind of wrapped up into one section rather than having to jump to several different uh, items like we would have to do in Windows Explorer. So now you know what the folders are. Now you know at least a little bit about this tool that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and move back on over to the Mem1 server and let's start off by using shared storage management to create our first two folders. All right, so here we are back over on Mem1 and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating those folders. We're going to go ahead and minimize the server manager for the time being. Oh yeah, and close the calculator too. We left that guy open. Uh, let's go to the start menu and administrative tools. And we're going to go over here to share and storage management. So we're going to open up the separate MMC. And it's really easy to use. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science or anything. And actually, you might think that this is even easier to use than Windows Explorer. And in some forms and fashion, I think that it is. All right, so here are the current drives that we have on this machine. Now you see here this protocol SMB. SMB stands for Server Management Block. That's the protocol that we use to share stuff. So when I start talking about share protocols and share permissions, what we're really talking about is SMB stuff, all right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and expand the Actions palette over here because this is actually uh, useful. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're going to provision a share folder, all right? So we're gonna click on Provision Share. And again, we're going to be starting with our sales stuff. Uh, we're going to be using our sales volume items. Go ahead and click on the Browse button here, and let's tell it where it's going to go live. We're going to select the E drive, and we're going to make a new folder here on the E drive, and we're going to call this Sales Docs. All right. I'll tell that one OK. And now we're going to click on Next. Now it's going to start asking us about permissions, okay? So you know what? Before we get too far in here, let's go ahead and switch back on over to the slides. Let's talk about uh, permissions that we're going to be setting. Right now it's asking us about NTFS permissions. We're going to worry and concern ourselves with share level permissions first. So let's talk about those so you got your head wrapped around before we kind of just jump right on into this stuff. Now, in terms of share level permissions, that's what we're going to be applying, okay? Now, share level permissions are pretty basic. Uh, when we create these folders, 
we can actually apply and decide who gets access to what as we're creating the shared folder. Used to be we would share the folder and then we'd go back and apply permissions later. Uh, but nowadays we can go ahead and just apply and set up our permissions right from the get-go. Now there's a couple of different permissions that I need you to understand here. First of all, uh, full control. You know, do I really need to explain the concept of full control of a folder? <laughs> no, I really don't. Uh, so full control, if we give a group or a user access to a folder that includes full control, well, then they get literally full control over the folder. Uh, the change permission, as you see over here in this little window that we're going to be looking at in just a moment, the change permission gives us the ability to add files, delete files, add folders, delete folders inside of the parent folder we're setting up the permissions on. The user cannot change the folder itself. So let's say that you want to make sure that the users cannot delete the folder that you're setting up to share. Well, then we want to give them change permissions. We don't want to give them full control. Full control allows them to trash the folder. If you want to make sure that you know your folders are going to stick around, just use change. And also, we have one more, which is read. So if you only give the read permission, then a user can't add or delete anything in the folder, just read what's there. But here's what you're probably going to do with most of your folders, okay? You're probably going to give change and read permissions to most of your folders. This will allow the users to see what's in it, and it will also allow them to add stuff to that folder or delete stuff or change stuff however they need inside of that folder, but it won't let them delete the folder. That's a good idea. Now, here's the thing. You can change or, or I'm sorry, you can deny or allow any of these, okay? Now, one quick note, deny. Uh, deny is really, you know, the strongest permission, something that you want to use very sparingly. Now, here's the thing. Permissions can be set for whole groups of users, or you can also apply permissions for individual users. Now, individual users are not going to do that as often. Most of the time, you're going to be using entire groups of users to apply permissions with. It's a whole lot easier to take a whole bunch of user accounts, throw them in a group, and then give permissions to that group for a particular folder. And again, deny is always the strongest. So this guy right here, this column, you want to use it very sparingly. All right, so there's just a quick primer on permissions. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about them. Share level permissions, here's the deal. The permissions we're going to be setting up on these first two folders inside of the Share and Storage Management Console, they exist at the folder level only. All right, big, big deal here. Share level permissions only work at the folder level. All of the files in a folder inherit the permissions from that folder. Okay, so let's take this for example. Let's say that Sales Docs. Let's say the share level permissions right now are full control to all members of sales users and sales managers. So that means all the sales staff in these two groups, sales users and sales managers, get full control over all of the files in the sales, sales documents. That's how share level permissions work. It only works on folders. Everything in the folder gets those permissions. Okay. Now, in just a little bit, I'm going to talk with you about how to restrict permissions on individual files, but that's coming up in just a little bit. Now, here's the permissions that we're going to be setting on these folders, okay? Uh, we're going to be taking sales docs, the one that we're creating right now, and we're going to be applying read and change for sales users and sales managers. Now, we're only going to be giving read-only access, though, to ops users and ops managers. Okay, so they won't actually be able to change anything in the file. They won't be able to add anything. They'll just be able to read stuff that's in that particular folder. The sales users and sales managers, however, will be able to do most of the things in that folder. They'll be able to add, delete stuff, change files. Not a problem there. But they won't be able to delete this entire folder. All right? This is a good thing. Now, the sales managers, we're going to create that one next using that share and storage management. Uh, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, only we're going to restrict it a little bit more. We're going to do read and change for only sales managers. Then for the sales users, we're going to do a deny all. Okay, So we want to make sure that sales users can't get into that folder at all. The same thing for ops users, but for the ops managers, we're going to provide them with read only access. Okay, So those are the permissions we're going to be setting for these two folders we're creating right now. Let's switch back on over to MEM1 and let's finish this process.
All right, so back over here to Mem1. Again, we're going to be skipping this NTFS permissions for right now. We're going to come back to NTFS permissions later on, though. All right, we'll tell it next. All right, here are the share protocols that we have, okay? SMB, remember, server message block. This is where, how we're sharing it. Sales docs, that's fine. You'll notice down here that NFS is not installed in the server. We don't have an NFS option. And right now you're asking, what's NFS? <laughs> NFS stands for Network File System. And you're only going to use this and have this installed. By the way, you can install it as a feature uh, in Server Manager. And you're only going to have this turned on and installed if you have Unix, Linux, or Macintosh operating systems open. Okay, if you have those running around on your network, you're going to have this available. If you're if you're a Windows only shop, you'll never have to wrestle it. All right, so we're going to be a Windows only shop, so we're going to be using only the SMB uh, protocol here. So we'll tell it next, and now we can decide how this guy is going to be shared. We can also add in a quick description. Let's go ahead and do that here real quick. I will put in here documents uh, for all sales staff. Okay. And now you see here our advanced settings, user limit, maximum allowed. We can decide how many users get to connect to this folder at one time. Now this access-based enumeration, this is cool. Uh, we're going to see this in just a second. I'll talk with you about it uh, in just a little bit here. Offline settings allows us to decide if we have users with laptops, if they get to take cached copies with them of that particular file. Let's go ahead and click on advanced. Let's get into the stuff here a little bit. Uh, first of all, user limits, maximum allowed is usually a good setting you know in most cases for general shares you don't have to restrict access you're only going to usually restrict access if you're seeming to have some bandwidth problems on your network so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this set to maximum allowed because I'm not anticipating any bandwidth issues but if I start to experience some I can actually restrict how many people get to connect to this folder at once and also, this I love this thing, this access-based enumeration. What this does is it allows users who are denied access to a folder altogether, they can't even see that the folder exists. So this is a good thing to have, all right? So I am going to recommend to you that you put a check mark on in this for all of your shared folders. If a user doesn't need access to it, then they shouldn't be able to see it at all just a real easy way to prevent any weird stuff from happening to a particular folder. Let's take a look at caching next. Now caching, this option is used if we have users who have laptops. They can actually take a copy of a file with them that originally lives on a shared folder on a server that does not necessarily live on their local machine, but they can take a local copy with them so they can access it like they would if it was on their machine. Or access it, I should say, as though it were on a server. They can edit it and they can make changes to it and stuff. And then they can bring that document back. And when they log on to the network again, the changes can sync up. Uh, we have three options. Only the files and programs that users specify are available offline. So only the files that users, when they create them, they can say, okay, this particular file somebody can take with them on a laptop. This file they can't. So you can actually set that up individually per file and program. We can also make everything in the folder available. Uh, so if someone walks in with a laptop and they connect to this, they can actually download a cached copy onto their laptop to take with them. So they have access to all those files. Or we can you know, be really secure and say you know, no files or programs from the share are available offline. So we can have the most secure option. Uh, we're going to use the semi-secure option. <laughs> uh, the least secure option, obviously, is this one. Uh, but we'll allow our users to decide what files that people can take with them on their laptops in which they can't. All right, so we'll tell this guy OK. And we'll see the changes show up here under advanced settings. That looks good. We'll tell it next. All right, next up is our share level permissions, also known as SMB permissions in Server 2008. You'll probably hear most folks like me talk to you about share level permissions. We're really talking about SMB permissions, OK? Now we have four options here. All users and groups only have read access. Well, that's not that useful. Administrators have full control and everybody else only has read access. That's not that useful in this instance either because we want only our sales folks to be able to have uh, read and change access. We're going to uh, skip these first three because these are pretty general. We're going to come down and set specific permissions on this particular folder. So I'm going to select users and groups have custom share permissions. I'm going to click here on the permissions box. 
Now, right now, you see how it's specifying only everyone. Well, that's not going to get the job done because we want to restrict <laughs> permissions, not just let the whole world see it. So we're going to go ahead and remove the everyone group. Now, we're going to add our groups that we're going to be allowing permissions for. So let's start off with sales users. Let's go ahead and add them. And we'll do, do sales managers here. There we go. I'm going to click on add again. We also want to add in here ops users and then add one more time and then ops managers. Okay, because we're going to be applying permissions for each. Let's start with the sales users. Okay, so for the sales users, we're going to allow them to change and read what's in the folder. Same thing for sales managers. We're going to allow them to change and read. Now for the ops users, we're going to allow them to read only, as well as the ops managers to read only. Okay, so you notice that that was set automatically by default. So unless we change it up from read, then it stays read only. All right, so we're going to go ahead and tell this guy OK. So we have applied our permissions to make sure that sales folks have read and change access, operations folks have read only access. We'll tell it next. And we have this DFS, distributed file system namespace thing happening. And this is a section for a completely different class for a completely different time. All right, so we're going to leave this blank for the time being and tell it next. Here's what's going to happen for all of our uh, wizardizing here. We're going to click on create. And you'll see that very fast, very quickly, we have created this particular folder. We have shared it over SMB. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and click on close. You see here that our sales documents folder is hanging out here. At any time we want to change something, we can right click it, we can stop sharing it, or we can also go into its properties and we can go here into the advanced settings again. Remember if we're having bandwidth problems or if this server just get the snot beat out of it all the time, we can change how many folks get to access it. We can also alter that access based enumeration, which is a really fancy way of saying if you have access to it, you can see it. If you don't, you can't. All right, so I'll tell that OK. And we can also come in here and alter permissions. So I can click here on the share permissions and review those and alter them as need be. We'll tell that OK. Also, NTFS permissions, but I'm going to get to that in a little bit. So we'll come back to the NTFS permissions thing. We'll tell that OK. Let's do one more shared folder using this particular tool. Uh, let's go ahead here into the location. We're going to create that sales managers folder next, right? So we'll click on the E drive. We're going to make a new folder for our sales managers. And we'll tell that OK. We're going to click on next. Do we want to change NTFS permissions? Not right now. We'll tell it next. And we're going to, again, use the SMB share level protocols because that's all we have. <laughs> so we'll tell it next. And, uh, in our description here, we'll put in here uh, only stuff for sales managers. And once again, we're going to come down here and alter the advanced section. Uh, we'll leave the maximum allowed fine. We will turn on access based enumeration so that people who don't have access to it can't see it. All right, caching, we're going to leave the semi secure option on again and we'll tell it OK. We'll tell it next. We're going to apply some custom permissions again, right? So we'll here add on permissions and let's remove the everyone group. We'll add in all of our groups that we currently have. We'll start off with ops users. And by the way, you, you, we can actually add in more than one group. Earlier, I was just adding in one group at a time just to kind of make it simple. But if I throw in a semicolon here, I can go ahead and add in everybody else. Ops managers, semicolon, sales users, semicolon, sales managers. Semicolon. Actually, we don't need a semicolon. <laughs> the last one. Let's check the names to make sure I can find all of them. All right, Nito. So it's found all of our groups that we set up earlier. Let's tell it OK. And now let's apply the appropriate permissions. All right, sales managers are going to get read and change. Sales users. Okay, we're going to deny all for the sales users. We're going to take off this read permission for sales users. We're going to deny everything. Okay, remember, we're going to use it sparingly, but the deny is the strongest permission level available. All right, let's do the ops managers. Ops managers want them to have read-only access. Okay, well, that's set by default. But the ops users, once again, we want to deny them access to this folder altogether. 
All right, so we'll tell that OK. So our permissions are set up, and it's going to cuss at me here. It's going to say, hey, you know what? Deny entries take precedence over allow entries. This means if, if a user is a member of two groups, if one's allowed a permission and the other is denied the same permission, the user is denied that permission. Now I'm going to talk with you about this here in just a second again over in the slides. But every time you set up a deny, it cusses at you because uh, Windows knows that, hey, you know what, you might be blocking something important for somebody who might be a member of two different groups. So this can be problematic. I'll talk with you a little more about that uh, after a little bit here. We're going to tell it yes to continue, though. We'll tell it next. Uh, we're going to skip this whole distributed file system thing for right now. We'll tell it next, and we'll tell it to create. And now we have successfully provisioned <laughs> that shared folder. So we'll close that. And here is our sales manager set of documents right here. Now, just so you know, even though we did not give the administrators access to these folders, you're the administrator. As the administrator, you have access to everything. So don't worry about that so much, all right? All right, so we have set up the sales docs and sales managers using the share level permissions. Now, let's take a look at the other two folders we're going to be creating. General Ops, we're going to be creating it on the F drive. And again, we're going to be pretty much doing the almost the exact same thing, uh, except that the roles are kind of reversed. Change and read for ops users and managers, but it's going to be read only for sales users and sales managers, okay? In terms of the ops manager folder, actually, it's not going to be full control, actually. It's actually to be read and change. All right, so let's go ahead and let's fix that here on the slide. Read and change. <laughs> That's some beautiful artwork, isn't it? So we're going to do read and change for the ops managers. We're going to deny everything for ops users and sales users. And then also specify read only for the sales managers so that the sales managers can see what's going on here but they can't add or change anything to it, all right? So let's go ahead, let's bounce back on over to the server, and this time we're gonna be using Windows Explorer to set these guys up. So we've used the shared storage management to set this up, and uh, we've set up these two folders. Let's go ahead and let's do the ops side now. Let's use the Windows Explorer. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to close our share and storage management. Let's go to the start menu and to computer. And here in the computer, you'll see our two volumes that we created here out of that secondary disk. Our sales stuff is set up here. Although the folder is currently empty. <laughs> we'll, we'll click on back. Let's go ahead and set up the ops stuff next. We're going to right click here. We're going to go to new and to folder. And we're going to do, well, what do we call it? General ops, I think, is what we called this guy and we'll create it and now we will share it. Now we can click on the share button, that'll be fine. You see that this is a little bit different, isn't it? It's a little bit different than when using the share and storage item. All right, so uh, right now Supercoach is the owner and that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let's add in here, uh, sales user, actually, no, let's not start with the sales user, let's start with the ops users, right? We'll add them, we'll add in the ops managers, We'll add them. We'll also add in sales users and then sales managers. Okay. And now you see we have kind of a simplified version of the permission levels. Now we want the ops managers to be contributors. That's the same thing as change, just so you know. All right. And then the same thing for ops users, contributor as well. Ops managers, we're going to be only readers as well as the sales or the sales users so sales managers and sales readers i'm sorry get to be readers ops managers and ops users are going to be contributors they can add stuff to this folder notice here that the administrator supercoach is the owner so if this file needs to be deleted only the supercoach account can do it all right we'll click on the share button here and bada boom bada bing our folder is now shared we can email the links to notify the folks that we have shared these files or we can copy the links onto the clipboard and let's go ahead and click on copy here and let's go ahead and open up a notepad real fast and let's just paste this guy using control v just so you see what it looks like and so here is uh, the share level item that we can use to jump to this particular folder and in just a little bit when we actually test all this stuff out using an actual user account other than supercoach on the vista client 
I'll, I'll show you another way to do that as well. We'll click here on Done. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's create the, or the Ops Managers folder here. I'm going to right-click on the Ops Managers folder. We'll go into the Share option here. And I noticed I right-clicked on that one this time around. So now we'll put in here Ops Managers, and they are going to be contributors to it. And we'll put in here Sales Managers as well. And for the Sales Managers will be read-only. Now, if I don't want to provide any kind of access for the user groups, the sales users and ops users group, I just skip them, okay, using this particular technique. Let's go ahead and click on share, but we are not denying them access though, okay? So we don't get to deny access using this little file sharing option. However, we can go back into the ops manager set folder, we can go into its properties, and we can access the sharing options here. We'll click here on sharing. And now we'll click here, rather than on this share button, because that just brings us up to this one, brings us back to the similar simplified sharing option. We'll close that. We want to go to the advanced sharing. So we'll click on it. And you see that the share this folder option is selected. This is the share name. And we can currently, we <laughs> right now, the simultaneous users uh, are like a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that that's a lot. All right, we'll click on permissions now. And hey, here we go. This is the window we were used to seeing earlier, right? With the other one? Well, this is, gives us more control. So let's go ahead and let's deny access for our user groups, okay? So let's put in here sales users, colon, and then we'll do also ops users because we want to uh, block them both, the users, from doing anything. So ops users and sales users, we're going to deny them access to make sure that you know we don't have any hiccups in the network along the way and they're accidentally granted access because they weren't denied it. Okay, So we're going to tell that OK. Again, it's going to cuss at us and saying, hey, you know what? Be careful with this. Yada, yada. That's fine. We'll tell it yes. All right. Also, let's go here to the caching section. Again, we have the semi-secure option selected here. We'll tell it OK. All right, so we'll tell it OK again. And now we have this guy shared out with its appropriate permissions. All right, neat. Let's click on Close. And now these two folders are now shared on the F drive. All right, well, it's one thing to set this all up, but it's a completely other thing to actually make it work, right? So what we're going to do real quick, let's go ahead and close out of this window here. And let's go to the server manager. Let's take a look. Uh, actually, we're going to have to jump over to DC1, actually. We're going to need to figure out who some sales users are and who some ops managers are. And we're going to test this stuff out on our client machine, CL2. We're going to test out these permissions, and let's see if this stuff actually does work. All right, so here we are over on the client one. Let's go ahead and let's move over and let's look at the DC1 machine here real quick. I wanted to unpin this here real quick so we can see the other toolbar. I'm going to go to DC1 and let's open this guy up. We're going to be going ahead and using the remote desktop here. And again, the server manager should pop up here for us automatically if it doesn't. Oh, looks like it's not going to. Let's go ahead and open him up. We might have two server managers going here for a second. That'll be all right. But now that we know where our folders are at, now we need to find some users that we can actually practice with. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the Active Directory Users and Computer section here. Expand that out here a little bit and expand this tree node. We're going to go into the Global Matrix domain and then into our New York OU. Let's go into the New York users section here and tell you what, let's start off by checking out the sales users group. Let's open up and see who's in the sales users group. Our members in sales users are Jay Hartson, Jay Owens, Jay Watts, Kay Neff, La Binga. All right, I think we're going to use El Binga because I think that's a fun name to say. So we're going to use this sales user uh, as a kind of a guinea pig account to see if our permissions on our folders actually did work. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move over to NYCL2 or our client 2 machine for Vista and we're going to log in as Elbinga 
And then we're going to try to access those folders and see if we can get to them. All right, so here we are over on CL2, Client 2. And again, this is part of our standard computers group, right? So let's do a quick Control-Alt-Delete. Let's switch the user. We're going to log in as Binga, And then we're going to use the default password. Of course, it's going to prompt us to change the password before logging on the first time. So whenever Binga actually does show up to work, uh, we're going to have to uh, let him or her know that... Uh, the password has been changed <laughs> or just reset the password back to the default which we can do that as well the password has been changed that's okay let's go ahead and let's see if we can't get on in here all right so here we are and this nice nifty welcome screen keeps showing up and you know what we're gonna need to do something about that I think we might need to check out how to wrestle that inside of our next video but I'm gonna keep that to myself for just a second for right now I'm just gonna close out the welcome center I'm also going to close out of the welcome bar and make sure that it does not start when Windows starts so we'll go ahead and exit that alright so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to access those file folders here and so I'm gonna open up a Windows Explorer I'm just gonna click here up in the address bar I'm going to type backslash backslash and we're going to type ny mem1 dash 2k. Oh, there it is. I can use the down arrow key and hit the enter key to select it. And now here are the file folders that we've shared earlier. So I'm going to try to get into general ops and it looks like I have access to it. Let me see if I can create something new in it though. Oh, nope. I need permission. Okay, well, that's cool. That means that this particular sales user does not have access to the general ops folder in terms of being able to actually create anything in it. Let's move back one, and let's go to the sales docs. Let me see if I can create something new in sales docs and create a new folder. Oh, yeah, there we go. So I can create my own little El Binga files folder here, and it's all set. So I have change permissions to or the Elbinga account I should say has changed permissions to sales docs. All right, let's move back and let's try to see if we can get into sales managers. Oh, nope. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> All right, well we can still see uh that particular folder. We can't get into it though. That's good. We want to make sure that we can even get into those folders. So, we're looking pretty good in terms of the actual permissions. All right. So, no worries there. Now see here that printers is also available here to us. If I double click on it, we don't have any printers yet. Although right now, I think I might actually have permissions to add a printer. Nope, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we have to actually go into the server as administrator and actually create the printers there. All right, so, hey, it looks like everything's working pretty good here. We are locked out of the managers folder. However, we can read only in the, in the general ops, but we can change stuff in the sales, in the sales docs. So. You know, I'm going to go ahead and take this test as we were successful in this endeavor. So let's go ahead and leave our client to machine. Let's go back to the slides and let's talk about the next set of steps we're going to take with this little project. All right, so you see we've completed this section here. And you also notice here that uh, while I was on the pause break, I also fixed this mess over here so it's a little more readable in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, in the next section, I want to talk a little bit about a really good idea that might end up going very wrong for you. Okay. Now, here's the situation. We want sales managers to have access to everything that the sales users do, but not vice versa. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually make the sales managers group a member of the sales users group. Now, if we make the sales manager group a member of the sales user group, and yeah, we can make groups member of other groups. Uh, that's what we call nesting groups. Then if sales users group has access to the sales docs folder, then so does the sales managers group. But then we could also give very specific permissions on the sales managers group to the sales managers folder, but the sales users will not have access to that sales managers folder. So initially this looks like a really good idea in a way to simplify some permissions. However, this may not necessarily be the best idea. Let me tell you why you might end up blo inadvertently blocking access to a resource 
by denying access to a group, and then all members of that group, including other groups, then get denied access. So let's say that we end up denying access for sales users for extra security. So let's say that these guys, nope, no access for you. No! Well, then we have a problem, okay? Because sales managers is a member of sales users, if sales users is denied access, sales managers do too. The deny permission, just so you know, it overrides everything. So this time around, this is a very bad idea. Now, you might be scratching your head and saying, well, coach, you know, how would I perform a debacle of this magnitude? And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to show you right now what this would look like. Let's go ahead and bounce on over to Mem1 server, and let me show you exactly how this might happen. All right, so here we are back over on Mem1, and let's go ahead and let's perform the debacle that we saw just now. Let's go ahead and go into the sales volume, and let's take a look at the sales managers folder here. We're going to right-click, and this time we'll go into the properties section, and we're going to go to sharing. Let's go to the advanced sharing this time around, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit the permissions of this particular folder. Now, right now you see that sales users are currently denied access, right? So since sales users are denied access, then they can't get to this folder at all. Now they can see the folder, but they can't open it. Now sales managers on the other hand have change and read access. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sales managers a member of sales users and see what ends up happening. So I'll tell you what, we're going to bounce on over to the NYCL1 client, and we're going to perform this task. I'll show you how to make a group a member of a group. And then, of course, we'll test out the permissions, and then I'll show you how to fix it. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and bounce on over there. All right, so here we are over on uh, Vista1 client. And you know what? We're actually still remote desktoped into NYDC1. And so what we're going to do here in on NYDC1 is we're in the New York users OU right now where our groups and users are currently living. Here's the sales managers group and the sales users group of course. So I'm going to double click on sales users. And you can actually do this either way but right now I'm going to go into the members tab of sales users and I'm going to add in the sales managers group here. I'm going to let's just check the name just real quick. There we go. We'll tell it OK. Now we're adding them in as a member of the sales users. So now that we have this accomplished, let's tell it OK. And now let's take a look and see who's in sales managers here. Let's go into the members tab. And let's do a T booth. OK, so we're going to go over to client 2, that other Vista machine, and we're going to log in as T booth. And let's see if we still have access, if we actually have any kind of access to sales managers. All right, so here we are over on CL2. Let's go ahead and make sure that we know where we're at. There we go. And so I'll do a quick, quick Control-Alt-Delete here. And right now it's trying to log us in as, Lob, as El Binga. And remember, El Binga is a member of the sales users, right? So let's switch user. We'll go to the other user, and we're going to do T booth this time. And we'll log in as this user oh, looks like we have to change the password here not a problem we'll do that real quick and again if we're going to be playing around with other people's accounts don't forget to reset the password or at least change tell them what you changed it to <laughs> so it'll take just a second here for the for the machine to come all the way up and then we'll test out our permissions and we'll see if we can actually get into that sales managers folder with the sales manager account. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and close out of this welcome central window. Again, we got to do something about that, don't we? <laughs> and the window sidebar, let's go ahead and turn it off too. And we'll exit that. We'll uncheck start sidebar when window starts. Exit sidebar. And now let's just go ahead and jump over to the computer here from the start menu. And we'll go ahead and we'll click right here in the address bar. Let me go ahead and move this guy out of the way so you can see him a little bit better. There we go. All right. Remember, in order to get to shared folders, we do backslash, backslash, and then the name of the machine. So... We're going to do ny-m1, 
And there, it pops up already. It found it for us already. All right, neat. So we'll hit the Enter key to jump over to it. Now, let's see if we can get into Sales Manager. So let's double click on it. And don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got a problem. <laughs> Our Sales Managers can't access the Sales Manager folder because they're members of Sales Users, right? All right, so let's go ahead and cancel that guy. And so now what we need to do in order to fix this is we need to bounce back over to DC1 through our Vista client, CL1, and we'll remove sales managers as a member from the sales users group. All right, so back over here on CL1, and we're looking at the sales manager's property. Now, right now, the sales manager is a member of the sales users. You know what? We can actually remove remove sales managers using this member of tab because this shows us what group sales managers is also a member of so let's go ahead let's remove it it's going to give us a quick little message here are you sure you want to do this yes we are we'll tell it yes and we'll tell it okay all right so now we've removed sales managers from sales users let's go ahead and bounce on over again to our cl2 machine and let's see if T Booth can now access the Sales Managers folder. All right, so back over here on CL2, let's go ahead and bring up our little window to tell us where we're at here. And let's try it again. Let's try to get into Sales Managers, double clicking on it. Oops, looks like we haven't got it yet. Let's go ahead and press the F5 key to refresh the window. And let's try it one more time. Yep, looks like that's not getting it. So we're going to go ahead and close this window. I think what's going to happen is we might be cached. So let's go ahead and let's log off and let's log back on this time around. And what we're going to do is we're going to try it one more time just to see if something weird is happening. But we should be in, in pretty good shape here. So logging off and just... Basically, we're just refreshing the account here. I mean, there's nothing really special about it. There's the Welcome Center again. Okay, let's close that. And we'll go here to the Start menu and to Computer, and let's try it one more time. Clicking up here in the address bar. Let's turn that guy off so we get him out of the way a little bit here. And we'll do backslash, backslash, nymem1. Oh, found it for us already. I press the down arrow key and then the Enter key to access that. And now let's try it one more time. Sales managers, how about you? Oh, there we go. Now we can get into it because we've removed sales managers out of sales users. So we've eliminated that conflicting permission set. And, you know, that's something that, you know, you just have to watch out for because every once in a while that happens inadvertently, hopefully. <laughs> but here's the rule that I want to provide to you. I want you to remember this, okay? If a group only allows access, then you can take a group and make it a member of that other group. But if a group is denying stuff, it's usually not a good idea, okay? All right, let's go ahead and let's go back on over to the slides now and let's talk about what we're going to tackle next. All right, so we have looked at conflicting permissions and hopefully if you're group structure and all that is set up correctly this won't be a problem but now you know how to do a little bit of troubleshooting always check to see if a group is a member of another group right okay so now we've tackled file folders let's talk about individual files next okay now we've been doing everything at this point at share level or SMB level if you will what we're going to talk about next is NTFS permissions now share level stuff happens at the folder level NTFS permissions can happen and be applied on both individual files and folders, and we can even apply these inside the shared folder. Now, let me tell you, kind of give you a more of an illustration here. Let's start off with our sales docs folder again. And you know that we've already applied these permissions to it, right? We have given read and change permissions to all members of sales users and sales managers. All right, so we got that. Now, let's say we have three files and a file folder right let's say we got a sales handbook a sales budget a, a training PowerPoint and then a reports folder let's say that we want to take these folders and give sales users read-only access we don't want sales users to be able to change 
delete, or really do anything with these except for read them. All right? So using NTFS permissions, we can actually apply read-only permissions to these three files and this one folder. And then we can have all the rest of the files and folders inside of sales docs still have read and change share permissions for our sales users by doing pretty much nothing but we can actually take these four guys up top here and we can apply different permissions to them using NTFS so we're going to kind of take these guys and break them away from the share inheritance that we're getting from the sales document sales docs folders now I just want to kind of throw in a quick suggestion here and I want you to file this away it's always a good idea to start off with the least restrictive share level permissions and then once you get inside the folder you can restrict more on individual files and folders inside of your parent folder or inside of that shared folder using NTFS okay so start off least restrictive and then inside get more restrictive using NTFS and by the way uh, NTFS all it stands for is new technology file system <laughs> I, I know it you probably know that already but that's the file system and the way that files are actually structured. Now, this file system where we're talking about NTFS actually works at a disk level. Right, so, you know, share level, it's really more of a software thing. But NTFS permissions is actually more of a file system on the hard disk kind of thing. Okay, so there's a pretty significant difference there. Now, before I jump you into this, I want to talk to you about inheritance, okay? Now, when you create files and folders inside of another folder, and a lot of times we'll call out the parent folder, those new files and folders initially inherit the permissions of the parent folder. So let's say we have a parent folder, and inside of that folder we have a child folder, and we have a child file. Now let's say that the parent folder has the read and change permissions to all members of the sales users and sales managers. All right, well that's neat. So that means that the read and change permissions to all the members of sales users and sales managers also gets put onto this folder. All right, well that's neat. And also to that file that is that gets created inside of this parent folder. So most of the time that's neat and most of the time we don't have to, that's really what we want to happen. But when we want to actually have more control over the folders and files, we can actually do what we call blocking inheritance. And we can block inheritance with this whole NTFS permissions thing. And we can do this for both folders and files. And we can get very, very specific in terms of controlling who gets to do what inside of that folder. So as you see here in my little diagram, we can actually have the parent folder have read and change permissions for everybody on the sales staff but then we can block inheritance here for a child folder and then we can put read only permissions for sales users but we can still give full control for the sales managers and then of course the exact same thing for files we can give read only permissions for the users but then full control over that one file for the sales managers I need you to keep something in mind here, okay? This particular type of permissions that I'm talking about right here, this is share level permissions, okay? But there's also an NTFS permissions that is set up on the parent folder too. So we're going to have to block inheritance of the NTFS stuff as well in order to get control. I'm going to show you how to do that here real quickly as soon as we talk about what Hank really wants in terms of his files and the sales reports folder. So here's the deal. Hank has emailed you three files that the sales managers, they need full control over, but the sales users should have read-only access to. And as a matter of fact, it happens to be those three files we talked about, the sales handbook, the sales budget, and the sales training PowerPoint. Now you've already put them in the sales doc folder. But now, what we want to do is we need to apply appropriate NTFS permissions to the files so that the sales users can't change them. Okay? The sales managers, we want them to control. We want them to have full control over these things. But the sales users, we want them to be able to read it, but that's it. Now, Hank, he also wants a sales reports folder that members of sales managers have full control over, but again, sales users can read only. So we want sales managers to be able to do stuff in that folder, but sales users, 
We don't want you to do anything except for read stuff inside of it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make all of this happen with NTFS permissions. In the next couple of techniques here, I'm going to show you how to block inheritance initially. Then we're also going to use inheritance to make all of this happen, okay? So let's go ahead and let's move back on over to our server, mem1. And let's go into the folder where these files, and actually this folder, are already waiting for us. All right, so here we are over on mem1, or our member1 server again. And let's go ahead and let's go into the sales docs folder here. And here are the files and folders that we were just talking about. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that these three files and this one folder, sales managers have full control over, but sales users can only read. All right. So let's go ahead and let's start with the sales reports folder. All right. I'm going to right click on sales reports folder. And we're going to go into its properties this time. I'm not going to share. Okay. I'm not going to go into the share section because we already have share level permissions on this folder. We're going to go into its properties and here's where we're going to go in order to alter the NTFS permissions of this particular folder in the security tab. Now we're starting off with a brand new clean folder. All I did by the way in order to create this folder is out here I right clicked and went to new and I went to folder. That's all I've done at this point. I didn't actually even use the share and storage MMC at all. I just went in here and just made a new folder. And then I copied and pasted a few files in here. Nothing special about these files at this point. So what we need to do is we actually need to block inheritance right now. We need to remove the permissions that are currently on this folder. And then we need to replace them with our own. So how we're going to do that, we're going to go here to the advanced section and we need to uncheck this include inheritable permissions from this object's parent. Remember that's the parent folder, right? So we're going to click here on the edits and I'm going to uncheck include inheritable permissions. You see here that we get a little security box that's saying, hey, you know what? Selecting this option mean that means that the parent permission entries that apply to this particular object will no longer be applied. Now we could copy the old permissions back, but that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to remove them in basically blocking inheritance of any permissions from the parent folder. And that's a good idea. That's what we want to accomplish right now. So we'll click on remove. All right. So now we have basically made it so that nobody <laughs> has access to this particular item. So I'm going to click here on add because now we need to add in the groups that we want to have access to this particular file folder. So we're going to put in here sales managers and pressing the enter key. And now we have to decide how, what kind of control we want to give them over this particular folder. Now, real quickly, I want to show you how, I want to talk with just a little bit about how many items we actually do have or this particular type of permissions. NTFS gives us a lot more access and a lot more options very, very granular. We can decide whether users can delete them or not, how they handle permissions, do we want to allow them to change permissions. We can even allow someone to take ownership of this particular file folder. Now, since this is the sales managers, we're just going to give them full control. Bam. Okay. So they basically get to do anything and everything on this particular file folder. Now, we can go ahead and apply these permissions to objects and or other folders inside of this container only. And that's fine. We can go ahead and we can do that. Uh, we'll get that whole inheritance thing happening anyway. But if there is anything in there right now, if there's any file or files or folders inside right now, we can actually replace their old permissions with these new permissions. And we'll tell this guy OK. And so now sales managers now has full control over this folder. All right, so we got a pretty good thing going on here. Let's go ahead and we're going to tell this one OK. And then we have to tell it OK again. All right. So now sales managers has full control, and that's a good start. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit these permissions again because we need to add in our sales users. So I'm going to click here on the Edit button. We're going to add in the sales users. And this time I'm not even going to put capitalization in there. I'm just going to have it check the name. Hey, it found it. All right. I'm going to tell it OK. And now we're going to provide sales users with read only. Now you'll notice here that when we use the edit button instead of the advanced, we get a lot less permissions over here. 
and these are usually going to be good enough for you. Uh, the only reason why we went into the advanced section to begin with is because we need to block those inheritances, and we need to give at least some kind of permissions to somebody over that particular folder. Once we have at least some level of permissions to somebody or some group, then we can go ahead and use these more basic NTFS permissions. But even still, the basic NTFS permission still has more options. We have full control, modify, read and execute, list folder contents, read, write, and then special permissions. Well, the special permissions, we don't need those. Okay, We would actually add special permissions back over in that advanced section that we just came from. Okay? But all we want to do is basically provide read-only access and these three items read and execute list folder contents and read are all that we need alright so that we're looking good right there now real quickly I'm gonna go ahead and add in one more I'm gonna add in myself <laughs> I'm gonna add in super coach into the permission set because if I don't add in my administrator credentials then I won't have access to this particular folder I shouldn't say that. I'll still have the ability to edit the permissions, but I won't be able to do anything with it when I'm logged into Supercoach. So I'm going to give the Supercoach account full control over this folder just in case something else needs to happen. All right. So I'm going to tell this OK. And now we can take a look real quick here at the permissions that we've applied. Sales Managers has everything. Supercoach has access to everything. Sales Users, basically a read only. All right, so now we can tell this OK. So now Sales re Reports has that new set of permissions, and it's no longer inheriting permissions from Sales Docs. Here's the next thing, OK? We need to do this for all three of these files. Now, we can do this type of stuff with each individual file. Let's go ahead and start with the Sales Handbook. Let's go ahead and do this here real quick. I'm going to right-click. And you'll notice that there is no share item, is there? It's because you can't share an individual file. You can only share a folder. So what we need to do is we need to once again go into the properties of this guy and go to the security tab once again to get to the NTFS permissions for this particular folder. All right, so once again, we have to go ahead and we got to block out the inheritance again. So I'm going to hit, click here on the advanced section. We're going to click on edit so we can get to this guy, right? Because if you don't click on edit, you can't check this. You can't uncheck it. it it's, it's locked out. So we're going to click on the edit button and then uncheck include inheritable permissions. All right. We're going to remove them. And then once again, nobody has access. So we have to add at least something here to it. So we'll click on the add button. And remember, sales managers gets full control, right? So let's go ahead and do sales managers. Check the name. All right, we're OK. We'll tell it OK. And now let's give them full control. We're allowing for full control. We'll tell it OK. All right, so we're looking good here for this one. Let's go ahead and tell this one OK. And then we got to click on OK again. And that brings us back to the basic security box. So our sales user stuff now, let's click on the edit button to use the more basic NTFS permission controls. Let's go ahead and let's add in our sales users. We'll check the name here real quick. A OK. We'll tell it OK. And now we're only going to give our sales users read and execute. You'll notice here that for the file, NTFS permissions are even more limited. Uh, but we still have more than just the share stuff. We have full control, modify, read and execute, read, write, and special permissions. Again, we don't need to worry about special permissions. We only want to provide read-only access, which is read and execute, and then read. You also notice that this popped up by default, didn't it? So that is basically the default setting. Uh, but just remember that you need to make sure that read and execute are allowed here. OK, so we're going to tell it OK. And now sales users and sales managers now have the appropriate permissions. Now, here's the next thing. Do you really want to do this for two more files? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't really want to. I mean, you know, why would we have to do that again? Here's the thing, okay? Let's go ahead and let's right click. Let's make another brand new folder. And let's go ahead and let's uh, call this sales training, okay? And let's take these three documents and let's put them in this folder, okay? Uh oh, looks like we have an issue here for the sales handbook. 
All right, we'll go ahead and we'll skip that one. Uh, looks like we have to go back in. Let's take a look at our security again. Hey, wait a minute. What's happening? Oh, you know what? Oh, don't. I forgot to put in Supercoach, didn't I? Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Because sales users can read and write. Sales managers have full control. But you know what? The Supercoach account doesn't have Jack or Jill or anyone else. So we're going to click here on the Edit button. And we need to add in the Supercoach account like we did with the sales reports. So this way, while I'm logged in here as Supercoach, I can actually do something with it. All right. All right, now I have full control. Okay, so now we're good. Let's click OK. And now let's take Sales Handbook and drop it into Sales Training. Oh, there, that's easy, wasn't it? All right, neat. Now, let's do the same thing with Sales Training that we did with Sales Reports. Because here's what's going to happen. We're going to be able to use that whole inheritance property on these three files. So we don't have to do that whole blocking inheritance and all that stuff two more times. We don't have to do it one more time. So now that we have those guys in there, let's right click on sales training and let's go into its properties. Now we're going to go to the security tab and once more to the advanced. And we're going to click on the edit button again. We're going to not include inheritable permissions. We're going to remove the current permissions on this particular folder. And now take a look at this one down here. Replace all existing and inheritable permissions on all descendants with inheritable permissions from this object. I'm going to put a check mark in here because here's what I want to happen. Okay, I want all three of those files inside of sales training to inherit the permissions that I'm about to set up right now. Even the one that I have already set up. Because you know what? I'll tell you the truth, I just showed you that one for uh, demonstration purposes. So you know you can actually control an individual file. Most of the time we don't want to do that though unless it's a really special file. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in our sales manager's permissions in here one more time. We're going to give them full control over sales training and we're going to tell it okay. And real quick while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add in Supercoach too. Because you know, I'll forget it later and then you'll laugh at me and uh, you know, we don't want that to happen, right? course there's some sections I want you to laugh at me because I'm trying to tell you a joke but otherwise all right enough jabber jabber still is okay so we've added in these two uh, sets of permissions here I'm going to tell this guy okay and now it's going to warn me it says hey you know what this is going to replace other permissions on all of the stuff in your sales training folder do I want to continue yeah absolutely because that's where we're doing this whole thing right all right so now we're going to tell this guy okay and now let's go ahead and let's edit our permissions in the more basic fashion. And we're going to add in our sales users this time around. We'll tell it OK. And now with the sales users, we only want to give them read access. All right, there we go. We're going to tell this guy OK. And so now what should happen, all right, is that our files inside of sales training for sales users should have only read and execute and list folder contents. Now, we could go ahead and we could jump over to another machine to test this out, but I want to show you another way you can check this, all right? So I'm going to tell this guy, okay, let's go into the sales training uh, properties again. I'm going to right click on it and go into its properties. We're going to go to security again, and we're going to go back to advanced. Now, take a look at this, these three tabs up top here, okay? Auditing, we have, it's a whole different lesson for a different time, okay? Here's the owner of this particular file, and, well, that would be the administrators and me. <laughs> okay, we can always edit that as well. I'm going to go here to the effective permissions, okay? Now, we're going to see what the effective permissions for sales training is for a very specific group. Right now, we're not looking at anybody. Let's click on select. And now, I'm going to type in your sales managers, and let's see what permissions sales managers has on this folder. Tell it okay. Sales managers has all of the all of these particular permissions. All right, great. Let's try another one. Let's try sales users. Let's see how we did there. There we go. Now sales users. Oh look, we only have a very small amount of permissions for sales users. Okay, well this is good. Okay, because that's what we wanted to happen. So right now we could actually take Windows Word on the fact that these users have just these permissions that are listed. 
Now also, this is really effective for doing some troubleshooting too. So if you're having sharing issues on your network, you can actually go here to the Effective Permissions tab and you can even look at very specific users. So I'm gonna click here on Select and let's take a look at La Binga. El Binga here. And let's see what kind of permissions El Binga has. Okay, well El Binga only has read-only permissions, right? Because El Binga is a member of the sales users. Now let's click on Select and let's take a look at T Booth. Okay, let's see what kind of permissions T Booth has. And you'll see that T Booth has full control because T Booth is a member of Sales Managers. So this little tool, you know, is really worth it, the worth the price of admission, if you ask me, because it's going to help you a lot while you're doing troubleshooting, trying to, to make your shares work. Because every once in a while, shares kind of freak out. All right, so we'll tell this guy OK. And we'll tell it OK again. All right, so our sales reports and sales training stuff here, we have applied sufficient permissions. So now that we have checked our permissions using the advanced section of the securities tab, we've made sure that all of this stuff, you know what? We've checked the permissions on the folder. We should check them on the file too, don't you think? Let's go ahead and let's open up sales training and let's just do the PowerPoint real quick. So I'm gonna right click on sales training here and go into its properties into the security tab and then to advanced. And now I'm going to go to the effective permissions tab again and click on select and let's take a look and see uh, Elbinga. Labinga, let's see, how about you Labinga? Labinga only has read only permissions on this particular file. Let's click on select, let's try T Booth one more time. I know you're about to, you're about ready to be done with this one, aren't you? <laughs> We've done this lots. We'll tell it OK, and you'll see that T Booth, because T Booth is a member of Sales Managers, has full control over this one file. So according to this, our permissions that we've set up are working A-OK. -okay. So we could take Windows Word for it, or we can go to a client machine, and we can check this out real quick. So let's go ahead and do that really fast. So I'm going to bounce on over to CL2, and let's see what we got. All right, so you see I'm over here on client two, and right now we're logged in as T Booth. Okay, so T Booth should have access to the to both file folders here. Sales managers, okay, we've got access to that. Let's go into sales docs and let's go open up sales training. And you know what? If I try to delete any of these files, I should have access to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> Uh, make somebody angry here. Are you sure you want to permanently delete this file? Yes, I am. Hey, let's see if I can do an undo real quick. Nope. Nah. You start deleting stuff off of file shared folders. You try to do a control Z as the shortcut to undo. Um, ain't going to happen. Okay. All right. So that's not so good. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to go put that back on the, on the server, right? All right. So let's go ahead and let's log off as T booth right now. And let's log in as Elbinga, because Elbinga has a little more restrictions on that particular account. So let's go ahead and do that here real quick. Oop, oop, we got to switch the user, don't we? There we go, other user, and now Elbinga. And we'll put in the password for Elbinga here. Whoops. One of these days, I'm going to learn how to type. And now we'll try out the permissions. Let's go in and see if we can delete a file as Elbinga. Okay, so I'm going to go here to the Start menu and to Computer. And once again, let's go ahead and get that out of the way here for a second. We're going to click up here in the address bar. Backslash, backslash. Oh, you know what? NYMEM1. Oh, there we go. There. Okay, let's jump right to it here. Okay, let's go into Sales Docs as Elbinga, and let's go into Sales Training here, and let's see if Elbinga can make anything new. All right, I'm going to try to make a new folder. Nope, nope, can't do it. You need permission to perform this action. Thanks, Windows. Okay, now let's see if I can actually delete this file. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I am. <laughs> nope, ain't going to happen. <laughs> All right, so we only have read-only access to these files. But tell you what, I'm going to go back out to Sales Docs, okay? And I'm going to see if I can make something new here in Sales Docs. Right-click, select New, and let's go to Folder here. I'm going to make a new folder for myself, for Elbinga, actually. 
oh yeah, I can do that inside of sales docs, but if I go into sales reports and I try to do the same thing, make a new folder, uh, no, nope, ain't gonna happen, right? Because I don't have change permissions on this folder. But sales docs, I do. All right, so are you getting it now? I mean, we've kind of bounced a lot through these files and through these different demonstrations. But here's what I want you to keep in mind. You can use shared permissions and NTFS permissions to create a really comprehensive security policy for your files and your folders. Now, obviously, there's going to be times when you're going to want to use share permissions only. There's going to be times where you're going to want to include NTFS. But here's the key, okay? Once you have your groups set up right, it's really easy to do this whole permissions thing. You know, and creating the shared level and the shared set of permissions along with NTFS, you, know, you, you have a lot of power in terms of what you can allow and what you can control in terms of what's happening on your network. Okay, so uh, we've completed this section. Let's go ahead now, and we're, we've been completely successful, haven't we? haven't we? So let's go back on over to the slides, and let's talk a little more here. All right, so let's go ahead and let's stop off here for just a second. And I know it's smack dab in the middle of this video, but here's some rules I want you to remember before we start talking about the next topic in this video. Uh, here's the things. Share level permissions work at the folder level only, okay? NTFS permissions work at the folder and at the file level, but you can use these two guys together to create a very, very comprehensive set of permissions and really control who can do what on your network. All right, remember that documents inside of shared folders inherit permissions, and that includes in share level or NTFS. Now, that continues to happen unless, yeah, let's circle unless here, you stop the inheritance directly. Remember how we went into the security tab and into permissions, okay? We just basically broke off those files and folders away from anything else. You have to apply new permissions. And here's something else that we're going to go ahead and demonstrate here coming up. Uh, when you start to move this stuff, okay, when you move shared folders, you lose your share level permissions, right? So everything's fine and dandy until you start wanting to reorganize everything. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you here in just a moment. But then when you move folders and files that have NTFS permissions, now they might keep their permissions or inherit permissions of the folder they go live in. So you're going to want to go back and check your NTFS permissions, okay? All right, so right now, though, I want to demonstrate to you the whole moving your shared folders real quick. Let's go back over to Mem1, and let's go ahead and take a look at this whole moving stuff thing. All right, so here we are back over on Mem1, and let's go up here to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and unpin this so you can see a little clearer here. All right, we're going to go back to the sales volume, and here's our sales docs and sales managers folder. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my sales managers folder. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to select copy, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to the computer and over here to the ops volume. We haven't done anything over here in ops, right, for a while. I'm going to right-click and see if I can paste this guy over here. Let's see what happens. Hit paste. And, oh, look, my all, all my little people went, went away. Let's see if I can do a Control-Z here to make that undo. Nope, that's not going to happen. So when I start to move stuff around, bad things, man, bad things. Or at least, you know, semi-bad things. Now, let's see if we can do the same thing here for ops managers. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to copy Ops Managers. I'm going to go over here to the computer, to the Sales Volume Partition, right-click and paste it. And again, look, all my people go away, okay? I'm going to right-click here. Let's see, uh, is it shared anymore? No, <laughs> it's not shared anymore. Okay, so that's a bad thing. I'm going to have to take this guy bouncing back on over. Let's go ahead and let's cut him, and let's uh, go back here to Ops, and let's paste him. Oh, well, no, wait a minute. I just copied it, didn't I? Okay, good. So no damage, real, no real damage done here. Uh, the sales managers, on the other hand, uh, let's see. Do we need to cut? Do we need to actually cut and paste him back over here? Let's go back over here. No, nope, we just copied it too, right? So what I can do is I can just delete these extra copies. And no real harm done when I'm copying stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and let's delete this one here as well. 
Now let's go ahead and I'm going to shrink this guy down. I'm going to shrink this window here and let's try another moving technique. I just want to make sure you understand what's going to happen here. I'm going to shrink these windows down so we can drag and drop instead of copying and pasting. Let's see, right now we're in the Ops volume. Let's go to the Sales volume. And now I'm going to take the Ops Managers. I'm going to try to drag and drop it over here onto the Sales volume. Again, what's happening? I end up dropping the shared permissions. So whether you cut, copy, or paste, if you start moving stuff around, you're going to start losing those permissions. All right. We'll go ahead and let's try a cut this time on the general ops. Let's cut him. Come over here, right click, and let's paste him. Oh, hey, look. This folder is shared with other people. If you move this folder, it will no longer be shared. <laughs> wow, looks like your coach is a little smarter than what he sounds like sometimes, huh? All right, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and tell it to continue. When I've cut the folder and actually moved it, then I drop my permissions. Okay. Now, if I'm dragging and dropping, I'm just really just copying it, right? So, no damage done there. I just lose my share permissions. Let's go ahead and let's cut this guy and let's paste him back over here. And you know what? Uh, we'll worry about that whole permissions thing later. I'll fix it later. You know how to do it. All right. So, I think uh, we pretty much uh, wrestled this one to the ground. I think you get the point. When you start moving things around, your permissions start to go haywire. Okay, so you really need to know if you and you really need to be sure if in fact you really want to start moving your folders around <laughs> because you're gonna to have to go back and probably fix a lot of your permissions. Alright, so where are we at here? Mem one? Okay, so I think I've tackled that one. Let's go back to the slides now and let's talk about the next set of stuff. Okay, let's now start talking about making stuff easier to find. We're going to be talking about what we call mapping a shared drive. Now, most shared drives or Mac drives, all they are, they're just shared folders. Okay? We're going to take a shared folder, we're going to assign a drive letter to it so that it's easier to find. And also, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take that mapped drive, quote unquote, and make sure that everybody can get to it from my computer. Right? I'll talk with you about that in the next video. But let's go ahead and set up the shared drive first so we can actually perform that task in the next video. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to map two main department folders. We're going to map sales docs as the S drive. And we're going to take the general ops folder we created and we're going to map it as O. Okay? Of course, we have to go back and fix those permissions, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do that as a quick review. So we're going to map these guys as quote unquote drives so they'll actually appear like a hard drive out of the network but they're really just shared folders okay now you, by the way you can share an entire hard drive if you want uh, it's not generally practiced <laughs> but you can if you think that that's what you need to do all right now once we have those two guys mapped we're going to make sure that Hank's account can access both mapped drives all right so that means we're going to have to take a look at Hank's permissions, aren't we? Yes, we are. So let's go ahead and let's mosey on back to the Mem1 server. And let's go ahead and let's first map these drives. Then we'll worry about Hank's access and we'll wrestle it from there. All right. All right. So we're back over here on Mem1. Let's go ahead and go to the start menu and to uh, just to the computer. Okay, we don't have to go in anywhere special here for this one. So let's go ahead and let's start off with the sales uh, docs. We're going to map it as S because we know the permissions are intact on that particular folder. So we're going to go ahead and click here, map network drive. So we basically all we're really doing is creating a shortcut. <laughs> you know, so we'll click on that guy. Now remember, we're going to map our network drive here, or we're going to map sales docs as S. Okay, and now we're going to click here on the browse. We're going to go find that folder. We'll click here on network. And uh oh, well, we got a problem here. Network discovery is turned off. Network and computers and devices are not visible. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and we'll do that here real quick. Let's go ahead and go to the start menu and go to the network settings. And there we go. Network discovery is turned off. Network and computers are not visible. Click to change. You know what? I can go ahead and I can click to change, but I want to show you where it's at in network and sharing center because you know what? We should have done this a long time ago. So I'm going to click here on network and sharing center. 
And remember how I was telling you earlier, I mean, way, way, way back at the beginning of this video, how we needed to ensure the file sharing was turned on? Well, look, it already is, okay? When we shared files, it turned it on automatically for us. We don't have to worry about that. However, the network discovery thing, uh, yeah, we need to do that, all right? Let's go ahead and turn on network discovery here and click apply. Very simple setting, but if we don't do that, well, then obviously we can't um, map stuff and find drives and all that. All right, so let's go ahead and close our network and sharing center and close the network section here as well. Now let's try it again. So let's cancel out. Let's try it again. Click on browse and network. Oh, there we go. We got a little hourglass looking for it there. Ah, there we go. That's what we were looking for. Every once in a while, we just have to close the window and bring it back to refresh the screen. All right, so I'm going to go here to uh, NYMEM1. You notice here the Ops Managers is here, Sales Docs, and Sales Managers are here. What's missing? The General Ops folder, right? Because that folder lost its share permissions when we started moving it around. So we will need to go back and reapply that whole sharing thing with it. So let's go, let's do Sales Docs, and let's try it here. We're going to select it, we're going to tell it OK. Oh, look. All right, looks like it, we were able to find it our a OK. So now we'll go ahead and click on Finish. And it goes ahead and tries to uh, connect to it. All right, we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and close this, and let's see what it looks like here underneath the computer, or the My Computer item. We have a one network location, uh, Sales Docs. It is mapped as a network drive. So that one is a okay that one worked all right now we got to go back and we have to fix the ops volume right we have to go fix that ops folder so let's go to the ops volume over on drive f and for general ops let's go ahead and share that so we need to add in ops managers and I'll see if i can learn how to spell it we'll do ops users we'll do sales users and we'll do sales managers and I'm just hitting the enter key every time. Oops, looks like I misspelled it, huh? Tell it OK. And let's do sales managers. There we go. All right, so right now you see that this basic file sharing guy, I'm going to be able to very quickly provide read only, change and read, or full control. That's what co owner is, just so you know. All right. So our ops managers are going to be. Not co-owners because we don't want them to get. We don't want to give them the ability to delete that file folder, right? Even if it's on accident. So we'll give them the ability to be contributors. And same thing with the ops users. Sales managers and sales users, though, we're going to leave them at reader level, right? Okay. So we'll click now on the share, and now our folder is now shared. Tell you what, let's go ahead and tell it done. And now that guy is shared again. Let's go back to the the standard computer screen. And now let's go ahead and let's see about mapping the network drive. Now, notice that when I select this guy, that map network, oh, there it is. All right, well, we don't want to map that one. Let's click off into the white space here so we can see it nice and clear. We'll map the network drive. We're going to map that ops folder as O, right? So we'll select O and we'll click on the browse button. And now once again, we'll wait for our network guy to show up here. Now, if you don't like to wait for this here, we can cancel it. We can just go ahead and type in the address to it, too. We can type backslash backslash ny-mem1-2k8 backslash, and then what we call it, general ops, right? So I could select that guy, and now I just tell it to finish. And, hey, there we go. It connected A-OK. -okay. looks like general ops is empty right now <laughs> and that's okay we'll close that and you'll see that general ops shows up as a second network drive over here underneath the network location section all right so our network drives have been set up here a-ok -okay, but now we need to test out and see whether or not hank richardson our ceo can get to both of these because if hank can't get to him well uh, that's going to be problematic <laughs> for you <laughs> as a system administrator. So let's go ahead and bounce on over to, first of all, our CL1 client, our Vista client, and let's check Hank's group membership because, you know, we're probably going to want to make Hank a member of the groups that can access both of these. All right, so here we are over on the Vista machine, uh, CL1 and Y-Viz. Let's go ahead and unpin the toolbar 
up top for our VMware machine because we want to be able to see that we are still remote desktop into DC1. Now let's take a look at Hank Richardson right now. Let's go ahead and open up his account and let's see what groups he's a member of. Well, right now he is a member of the domain users. He's also a member of ops managers. All right, well, that's a good start, but we also want to make sure Hank gets full access to the sales stuff too. So let's go ahead and let's add Hank to the sales managers as well to make sure he has full control of all the stuff that we've also already set up with that whole share level and NTFS permission thing that we were doing earlier. Let's check the name. All right, we're looking good. We'll tell it OK. All right, so now Hank is a member of Ops Managers and he's also a member, member of Sales Managers. So with these two group memberships, we should be able to access both of our network drives quickly and easily. So let's go ahead and let's try it out here. I'm going to close out Hank Richardson's properties. And now let's move over to the Client 2 machine, our second Vista machine, and let's log in as Hank. And let's see if we can find those two shared drives that are out there on MEM1. All right, so once again, back over here on the on CL2, our second client machine, we're going to close out of this. And right now, who are we logged in as? We're logged in as Elbinga. All right, so let's go ahead and close out Elbinga and log him off or her off real quick here. And then we'll log back in as Hank Richardson. And then we'll check to see if we still have access to uh, those particular items. We're going to switch the user, click on other user, and then we'll log in as H. Richardson. And also, don't forget to tell Hank that we changed his password too, right? <laughs> All right, so here we are. We're logged in as Hank. Let's go ahead and close out this welcome window here. And again, just to remind us, we're logged in here on Client 2, right? We're logged in on our second Vista client. All right, let's go ahead and close out this Windows sidebar that keeps popping up. Do not start when Windows starts. Exit the sidebar. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go to the network section now, and let's see what we can find over here. Let's go to MEM1, and let's see here. We have the general ops, and we have the ops managers. Let's go ahead and open up the general ops folder. Yep, Hank's got access to that one. Let's move back. Let's see, does he have access to sales docs? Yep, looks like he has access to sales docs. Let's try to create something new here just real quick. Uh-oh. Hank does not have access to sales docs in terms of being able to do anything in it. And that's not good, is it? So what does that mean? Yep, that means we need to go back over to client one. We need to check out Hank's permissions and probably even the permissions on sales docs too because it uh, looks like something isn't happening quite right here. So we're going to go back on over to client one and let's check it out. All right, back over here in Client 1, remember we're still remote desktop into DC1. Let's open up Hank Richards, and let's take a look. He's a member of Ops Managers, and uh-oh, hey, wait a minute. What happened to the sales stuff? Well, let's try that again. Let's add him back in. Looks like it didn't take first time, so we're going to just try it one more time and see if we can't make that happen. There we go. All right, we're going to tell this OK. And now let's move back on over to Client 2 and let's give it one more whirl. All right, so back here on Client 2, let's go ahead and close out of this window. And remember, uh, we're going to try it one more time by going to the Network section. And we're going to go to that MEM1 machine. We're going to go to Sales Docs. Right click. Let's see, can I make something new here? Nope. Hmm. Well, now that's interesting. Why do you think that is? Well, remember how we set up the permissions on this particular folder? Yeah, we're going to have some problems, okay? Because on sales docs, the ops people only have read-only access, don't they? Well, we've made Hank a member of ops and the sales managers. Yeah, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> we're going to have a problem here with our permissions. 
See how it all comes back around, huh? Huh? You see the the madness behind my method? So what we need to do is we're going to need to create another group. And we're going to need to put Hank in that third group. And we'll make a specific group called executives, okay? And we'll make sure that the executives have full control or at least read and change access for all of our shared folders. So what we need to do is go back over to client one because remember we're remote desktop over in over there. Let's go ahead and go back over to it and let's pull Hank out of the ops managers and sales managers group. And then let's make Hank a new group and then apply permissions for that new group executives to these two shared folders. All right, so back over here on client one, remember we're remote desktop into DC one here. And so we need to pull Hank out of those two groups, member of, because we need to make sure that the boss man can get to everything. So we're going to remove him out of ops managers and remove him out of sales managers as well. And yes, we do want to remove him out, yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and tell that, okay, that's a good start. Now let's right click here on New York users and let's make a new group. Oops. And we're gonna call this group executives. And again, we're going to leave the default settings here on this group alone for the time being. We'll tell it okay. All right, so here's our new executives group, and now let's put Hank in that new executives group. I'm going to right-click on Hank, add to a group, and I'm going to type in the group's name. Actually, I don't even need to put in the full full name. I'll just type exec and have it check the name, and it finds it A-OK. -okay. So we're going to tell it OK, and now Hank has now been added to the executives group. So what do we have to do now? We have to go back over to NYMEM1, and we need to add the executives permission to the folks who have permissions on those two shared folders, right? So let's go ahead and do that here real quick. All right, so here we are back over on Mem1. Let's go ahead and let's pin that here so we know where we're at. Let's go into the sales folder and let's go ahead and let's apply permissions to the sales docs here. We're going to change the sharing, we're going to add in the executives. And we're going to give the executives contributorship so that Hank can actually access this folder. He can create new files and change them. We'll click on share and then done. Let's do the same thing for sales managers. We'll share. We'll add in the executives group here. We'll make a contributor there as well. Okay, we'll click on done. Now let's do the same thing for the ops folders. Right click, we'll go to share, change the sharing permissions. Now why am I giving the group access instead of just Hank? Okay, because you know what, I could just give the Hank folder, the Hank account, H. Richardson account, access to. But what happens when I want to add additional executives in, <laughs> right? So general good practice is that we provide permissions only to groups. Now you can provide individual permissions when the need arises, but it's not going to happen very often. Okay, It's just not going to happen very often. All right, so Hank now has contributor permissions to this folder. Let's go ahead and now bounce back on over to client two where Hank is logged in. And now let's see if he can access those two folders. All right, so here we are back over on client two. We're going to close out of our shared window. And you know what? Let's go ahead and let's just log Hank off because we made some significant changes to his membership. And a lot of times that does require a logging off and log back on. So let's go ahead and do a control alt delete and log back on here as Hank. And now let's give it another whirl and let's see if he has access to those folders. All right, let's close out of this window. You know what? Down here at the bottom, run it startup. Okay, fine. We're going to uncheck that. We're going to not run that anymore. 
and close out of Welcome Center because that's going to get really annoying. And again, you know, we don't want Hank pushing on buttons that he doesn't need to push on. Okay, I know he's the CEO and everything, but um, when there's buttons, people push them. All right, so let's go back over to the Start menu and to Network. And let's see if we can access those particular drives. Let's go to Mem1. Here's General Ops. Let's go ahead and open it up. The folder's empty right now. Let's see if I, Hank's account can create a new folder in it. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now we can call this uh, Hank's folder. All right, good. So General Ops we have access to. Let's go back to Mem1. Let's go to Sales Docs. Let's right-click here, and let's make a new folder here as well. All right. Hey, now we're cooking. Now we've got something going on here. All right. So by now, after all of this bouncing around between machines, you see how important permissions become, don't you? I mean, if your permissions aren't quite right, and if you have people in multiple groups and those groups are denied access or maybe only have read-only access, that can cause problems. So setting up your groups correctly and adding in the right accounts into those groups is going to be critical for the success of your network. With Globomantics, in this case, if Hank can't get to these two folders, yeah, there's going to be problems. He's going to be angry, right? You know, it's his company. He's going to want access to all this stuff. But now that we know that Hank can get to these folders, we can go ahead and we can map these right onto his accounts. So let's go ahead and let's do that real quick. Let's go here to the computer section. We're going to map the network drive again. Let's map the ops folder here for Hank so he can get to it real easily. We'll click on the Browse button, and now we're going to wait just a second here while our client looks up the machines. There we go. Mem1. Let's go ahead and let's map the general ops folder here for Hank. There we go. And we'll tell it Finish. All right. Looks like we connected to AOK. -OK. Let's close that. Now let's map one more drive for Hank. Let's map the S drive, right? We'll browse for it. And that's going to be our sales docs, right? So we'll map sales docs here for Hank as well. We'll click on finish. All right. Looks like Hank has access to sales docs too. We're in good shape. Let's go ahead and close this one out. So we have general ops and we have the sales docs mapped here for Hank as network drive. So he can get to them very quickly, very easily. They show up similar to hard drives here in the network location section. So I could actually jump here to the S drive and find stuff that's hanging out here for the sales folks. All right, so we have successfully completed our mission here with the mapping of network drives. Now here's the bummer, okay? If you want to have all of your network drives mapped to all of your client machines, to all their accounts, Right now, without knowing anything else, you'd have to log in as each individual user account and map those network drives. Fortunately, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do that automatically. Okay, So you don't have to continue to map network drives over and over and over again for, say, 50 users, right? Or in our case, 25. Or really, 24, because Hank's already been added, right? We've already mapped him for him. Okay. So last but not least, friends, we need to talk about printers. So let's go ahead and let's mosey back on over to our slides and let's talk about creating and sharing printers next. So we have really traversed a lot of ground here. We've talked about permissions and NTFS permissions and all kinds of stuff. We have one more section in this video. Let's talk about printers, okay? Now, first of all, I need to explain to you that there in Microsoft world is a difference between printers and print devices. Okay? A printer is software. When you add a printer in the operating system, you're really creating a software printer. A print device is the actual hardware that actually puts ink onto paper. Okay? Now, I know in normal lingo, when we talk about printers, we're talking about the actual devices. But in networking world where we live at right now, a printer is the software side, a print device is the hardware side. Now you need to have a printer in order to use a print device. Okay. Now once we have printers, we can use this whole sharing thing and this whole permissions thing 
to control who has access to which print device. And let me tell you what, this is really going to solve a lot of problems in your office. This is going to prevent people from fighting over the printers. We can actually get even down to the level of controlling the order of print jobs in the management section. We can decide who gets to do that and who doesn't. So what we're going to be doing here in this video is we're going to be actually building um, printers for three print devices. Okay, We have two laser print devices and one inkjet print device. Okay? You're going to be creating a printer for each of these devices and then you're going to assign permissions. Yay, it comes all the way back, doesn't it? As what we're going to see here. So we're going to have the sales laser printer. And the sales laser printer, we're going to have sales users be able to print. We're going to have the sales managers be able to print and manage print jobs on that guy. But the ops groups, ops managers and ops users won't be able to access it at all. Then we'll also have one for the ops folks, okay? And again, same kind of thing just for the ops people. Ops users can print. Ops managers will be able to print and manage the print jobs. And then sales users won't be able to use it at all, including the sales managers. Now, let's take a look at our last one, the inkjet. Now, you already know the inkjet printers are more expensive. Uh, the ink is more expensive, too. So we don't want to give everybody access to the inkjet. You know, I know lots of people like pretty colors and everything, but the ink in the inkjets are expensive. So for the manager's inkjet, the sales managers are going to be able to print. The ops managers will be able to print. But you know what? Sales users and ops users, they won't be able to access it at all. Okay, so we're going to make sure that we block them out altogether. And only the super coach account will be able to manage the manager's inkjet. So now you know what we're going to build. So let's go ahead and go back over to the member one server, mem1. And we're going to be adding in our printers there. Now also, just a quick note. You don't have to have a, an actual print device in order to add a printer. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of funny, and at some level it is a little bit silly, but it is true. So I'm going to tell you a secret. What I'm going to be doing in this next demonstration is I'm going to be adding printers. I don't have print devices, though, attached to them. So even if you're playing along at home or you have a machine that you're wanting to practice this stuff out on, you don't have to have actual print devices. We can actually install just the software side, the printers and the printer drivers and all that good stuff and go from there. Okay, so let's move back on over to MEM1 and let's get this set up. All right, so here we are back over on MEM1. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the ops volume here. I'm going to go to the start menu and I'm going to go to the control panel. And inside the control panel here, we're going to go to the printer section. And right now, it looks like we have some uh, printer options. We have a VMware virtual printer because we're obviously on the VMware machine. And we have the Microsoft XPS document printer to create kind of a PDF type of document. That's really not that useful to us right now. All right, so we'll click here on the add the printer. And we're going to be adding in local printers. All right. We're going to be using uh, LPT1. That should be A OK for these here. And we'll tell it next. Now, right now, it's going to find a list of all the pre installed drivers that we're going to be able to use for this one. And I'm going to be selecting an HP printer. Now, remember, we're going to be adding in the lasers first, right? So. We're going to find a laser jet printer here first. And I'll tell you what, I like the you know, good old fashioned HP laser jet 4L. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, so we're going to use that one. We'll tell it next. And we'll go ahead, we'll add this guy as the sales printer first here. And it won't be our default printer though. All right, so we'll tell it next. It's going to go ahead and install the printer even though our print device isn't actually connected. Now we do want to share this printer so that other folks can find it and use it, right? So we'll go ahead and leave the share name as it is. Uh, location will leave blank. Uh, these are more uh, descriptors here. We'll tell it next. And we could print a test page, but there's nothing attached. So we'll just go ahead and click on finish. And now our sales printer has been added. You'll see that it is shared. Look at the little people here. 
Aren't they cute? All right, we're right click, and now let's select sharing. Okay, now we currently do have this shared, but here's what I want to point your attention to here. See where it says list in the directory? Okay, we want other people to be able to find it. And <laughs> the easiest way to do that is to be able to list it in Active Directory. So we're going to list this guy in Active Directory, and we'll go ahead and click on Apply. It's telling us that it may take several minutes. That's fine. We're going to click on the Security tab now. And here in the Security tab, we're going to be taking a look at the permissions we're going to be setting. So you see right now that everyone has the ability to print right now. Well, we don't want that. Okay? We don't want everyone to be able to print to the sales printer. So I'm going to select everyone and remove them. Now I'm going to add in a new group. We're going to be adding in sales users. Okay? We're going to allow sales users just to print. Right? And that's set up by default, as you see. All right, we're going to be now adding in the sales managers. And we want the sales managers to be able to not only just print, but also manage the printer and the documents. So we're going to select sales managers and we're going to have them print, manage the printers, and also manage documents. Now there are also special permissions here. I could click on the advanced and we could edit the sales managers here if we wanted to get really wild and crazy. There's not much else here though, <laughs> as you see. So that's good enough for us. We don't have to necessarily mess around with the advanced security settings for the printers. And you're probably not going to very often. All right, so sales users are set up to print. Sales managers are set up to manage and to print as well. Let's go ahead and let's add in our ops people next, okay? So let's try to add in ops managers, semicolon. Let's try to add in ops users at the same time. Can we do it? There we go. All right, so ops users, we're going to deny them everything, okay? They're not going to be able to do anything. Ops managers, same thing. We're going to deny them all kinds of access to this particular machine. We'll click on apply, and again, it's going to cuss us. It says, hey, you know what? You're setting a deny permissions entry. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I am. <laughs> Don't tell it, yes. And you know what? There's something important we're, we're kind of forgetting here right now. We, we set up the sales folks to be able to print and manage. We set up the ops people to deny everything. But what about Hank? Now, do you really think that Hank is going to be happy about not being able to print to his printer? <laughs> doesn't matter whether it's the sales or the ops. He's going to want to print to it. So let's go ahead and click on Add. And let's add in here the executives group for Hank and anybody else that we decide to add into that executives group later too. And let's give them access to everything, okay? All right, so our first sales printer has been set up. Let's go ahead and let's add another printer next. And since, again, since we're just kind of cheating, we're adding in uh, printers that don't have print devices, we're adding them as local. And I'm gonna be adding in, again, a LaserJet 4L. I can go ahead and use the driver that's currently installed tell it next and this time we're going to call this the ops printer tell it next and again we're going to share it that's good we'll tell it next and finish all right so now that we have the ops printer set up here I'm going to right click and we're going to go back to sharing we're also going to list this guy in the directory so that folks can find it real easily click on apply so we can have that started and now we'll go to the security tab and again, we have to basically do the exact same thing that we did with the sales folks, only this time for the ops. Okay, so again, we're going to remove the access for everyone to print to it. We'll remove that. Let's go ahead and let's add in all of our groups all at once here. All right, so we'll do sales managers, semicolon space. We'll do sales users, semicolon space, ops managers, semicolon space and ops users. All right, we'll check the names. All right, we found all of them, that's good. We'll tell it okay. And now we're just gonna do the exact same thing. Ops managers, gets to they get to print, manage printers and manage the documents, great. Ops users, they get to print, that's neat. Sales managers, we're denying them everything on this particular printer. And for sales users, doing the same thing, denying them everything. Oops, we forgot one 
again, didn't we? Let's add in the executives. <laughs> we got to make sure Hank can get stuff printed. Otherwise, he's going to be mad. So we'll go ahead and we'll give the executives group access to everything here as well. All right, we'll tell it OK. And again, it's cussing at us because we're denying the salespeople, right? That's OK. We want to do that. We'll tell it OK. All right, so ops and the sales printer are set up. Let's add one more here. Again, we're cheating and adding a local printer. Still cheating and using the existing ports here, telling it next. And now we're going to be adding in an inkjet printer here. So we will do, not the color laser jet, here we go. We'll just do a business inkjet real quick. We'll tell it next. And then we're going to be naming this guy Manager's Inkjet, right? All right, should take just a second here for us to install the printer and get it, that guy set up. All right, we're going to be sharing this one, of course. So we'll tell it next and finish. All right, so for the manager's inkjet, one more time, right-clicking, going to sharing. We'll list that guy in the directory. Click on apply to get that process started. And now we'll go to the security tab. And again, we'll remove everyone. We'll add in all of our users again. Ops managers, ops users, sales managers, sales users, and let's not forget the executives, right? All right, so for the executives, Hank has to print to the inkjet because he likes pretty colors, so we'll do that one. Ops managers, we're going to give them the ability to print, but that's it, right? We're not going to give the ops managers or the sales managers access to manage this one. Ops users, we're going to deny them everything. Sales users, we're going to deny them everything. And again, remember, deny is the strongest. So if you put anybody in ops users or sales users, if they're in the ops managers group or the sales managers group, they're going to be out of luck when they go to print to this one. So you know, watch your denies. Okay, I know that I'm doing this here in the demonstration. You're thinking, hey, you know what? You told me to use it sparingly. And now you're using deny all over the place. Well, when you really want to keep somebody out of something, you set the deny permission. Okay. All right, the super coach account. The super coach account you see has already been set up here to basically do everything. So that's going to be okay. For the sales managers, though, we only want the sales managers to be able to print. So sales managers can print, super coach can manage everything, sales users are denied, ops users are denied, and the ops managers can print. Nope, let's not forget to double check executives and Hank has access to everything because, well, it's his company. All right, so we're gonna tell it okay. And again, it's gonna holler at us and saying, hey, you're setting deny permissions again. Yes, I know, I'm gonna tell it yes. And now our printers are complete. So these printers are set up on MEM1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check to make sure that Hank can get to all of our printers, okay? Just to make sure that they're alive and that they're shared out and that we can find them quickly and easily. So I'm going to bounce back on over to Client 2, where Hank is still currently logged in, I believe. And we're going to see if Hank can find these, machine, these printers quickly and easily. All right, back here on Client 2, I'm going to go to the Start menu. Looks like Hank is still registered in here, so that's good news. And I'm going to go to the Computer window here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the Address bar. Let's go ahead and shrink that up. We know where we're at now, right? And I'm going to navigate over to Mem1. So I'm going to go backslash, backslash, NY, Mem1. I don't want to go to the general ops folder though. I just want to go to the machine proper. Okay. Hey, look. Here's the inkjet. Here's the ops printer. Here's the sales printer. I'm going to double click on sales printer. Can I get to it? Yes, I can. So Hank can actually see what's being printed on that particular printer.
Let's go ahead and let's add these printers into Hank's general stock of printers here. We're going to go to the Start menu. We're going to go to the Control Panel. We're going to go to Hardware and Sound and Printer. And right now we have the sales printer. We have it shared out. Okay, well that's good. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can add in another printer. And look, we found them. <laughs> Neat. So here's the Ops printer. We'll tell it next. And we're going to go ahead and connect to it. And we are we going to set it as the default printer? Yeah, sure, we can do that for the time being, and we'll finish. Let's go ahead and add one more printer just so Hank has the ability to add in all of them. We're going to be adding in the network printer because, remember, it's shared out, right? Here's the Manager's Inkjet that's living on MEM1. Let's select it. We're going to try to connect to it here real quick. Let's see if we can reach the printer. Remember, we're not reaching the print device, right? We're only connecting to the printer. We're connecting to the software that runs the print device. All right, looks like we found it A-OK. -okay. We'll tell it next, and we'll click on Finish. So, man, we're just batting a 1,000 here. <laughs> Our printers are added A-OK, -okay, and Hank will now be able to use any one of these three printers whenever he sits down at his computer. So we're looking really good and really sharp here. I really should say when Hank sits down at client two, right? At the very least. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's close out of this one. Hank is all set up with his shared folders, with his shared printers, and we are at the conclusion of this video. So let's go ahead and let's go back to the slides. I want to do some wrap up with you here real quick, and then we'll move on to the next video. All right, so here's what Globomantix looks like now. This is kind of a, a general diagram. Remember we have that whole Active Directory structure we set up earlier? We have the Blue Man group over here with the 25 user accounts. Uh, we have the uh, groups for users that we've been using all throughout this lesson, right? We have our two computer accounts. Uh, we have two groups for computers. We really didn't do much with the groups for computers, but in the next lesson, and in future lessons, we will be using those. So keep those kind of filed away in, in the back of your mind, but we'll be coming back to them for sure. We have two clients that we've been using all throughout this lesson, too, Client 1 and Client 2. We've been using Client 1 as our primary machine to remote desktop into DC1. Client 2, we've been using that guy just to test stuff out. Here's our new machine for this lesson, NYMEM1, and we also set up our shared folders and our shared printers as well. So let's go ahead and review some quick uh, jargon from this video. Remember that a member server is a server that's not a domain controller, but it's joined to the domain and has a particular job or role. Share permissions, permissions that only apply at the folder level, and they're inherited by all the files inside unless NTFS permissions are applied, right? NTFS permissions, remember those apply or they can apply to both folders and Notice the big AND here, files as well. So we can use share and NTFS permissions together to really create a very comprehensive security system for our files and our shared folders. A partition is just a section of our hard drive. Remember we set up those partitions earlier. SMB stands for Server Message Block, and it is a protocol that we use for share permissions on a folder, right? A mapped drive. It's usually just a shared folder that has been assigned a drive letter so that we can find it really easily. Okay, after viewing this video, here's what you should be able to do. You should be able to partition and format a hard drive on a server 2008 via disk management. We did that at the very beginning, right? You should be able to create shared folders and assign shared permissions to groups via the share and storage management MMC. And also, I kind of snuck one in on you, also the Windows Explorer, right? You should be able to at least describe the differences between share and NTFS permissions. You should be able to assign NTFS permissions to files and folders. You should be able to map shared drives, quote unquote. Remember, that's just a shared folder we assign the drive letter to to find it more easily. And you should be able to create and assign shared permissions to printers as well. That's what we accomplished. And if there's anything on this list that you're not sure if you're able to do, go back and view that section again. All right, now, coming up next in the next video, we're going to start using our OUs, our organizational units now, to apply what we call group policy. 
we're going to make sure that users can't break stuff or as you really should say they can't break as much stuff as if it weren't applied so we're going to get in and start controlling what they can do and what they can't on your network clients so stay tuned and i will see you in that next video